This is Real Estate Rookie Show number 78. My name is Ashley Kerr, and I am here with Tony Robinson, and today we are back with another episode of Rookie Reply. Hey, Tony. What's up, Ash? How, how was your day going today? Pretty good. Um, nothing real exciting. I took my son to, he started a little gymnastics fun camp thing, so me and him went to that this morning, but other than that, it's a beautiful day outside, and I'm stuck in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny it's been like super gloomy like the past two days in socal so we've been we've been stuck inside yeah here. yeah uh i also brought my motorcycle back uh from texas so i think i might go for a, a motorcycle ride today oh man your first ride in, in in new york actually i did one the other day i did 50 miles and 50 miles? i was freezing oh, i even man. had like a sweatshirt on my motorcycle jacket on gloves on my helmet <laughs> And I was so cold. At one point, I pulled over because I, like, felt myself shaking. So I pull over. I'm like, okay, I'll just sit in the sun. Because it was, like, sunny out, but still cold. Sat in the sun for a minute. These cars go by me. Oh, I feel one car slowing down next to me. And I'm like, oh, great. Here we go. It's somebody I know or whatever. And it's just this guy. He's like, hey, are you okay? Do you need help? <laughs> and I was just, I'm good. I gave him the thumbs up. And he just kept going. Then I pulled out behind him and kept going. But uh, it was really awesome. funny. So oh. are you riding yeah. anywhere in particular? Or just like a, a leisure stroll through Western New York? Oh, yeah. I found that I can't go over 50 miles without feeling like I'm going to blow off the bike. So, yeah, just a real little casual <laughs> stroll. Okay. And basically, the so that one ride was basically a straight shot. It was one road to my rehab. So, like, 20 miles there, 20 miles back, pretty much. Um, and then a couple turns to actually get to the house. Yeah, <laughs> Fun but times. Anyways, today on Rookie Reply, uh, do you want to go ahead and read off our question today? Yes. We pulled this one uh, from Facebook. Yeah, absolutely. So, so today's question comes from uh, Gray Clifton. And uh, Gray's question is, as a newbie, I'm learning so much. Um, but I was wondering, how do you guys find accurate property tax information, um, including things like supplemental school taxes when you're running numbers on potential investment properties. I'm looking at multiple cities and states, um, and my first purchased uh, only ended up having a lot more taxes than I realized, um, even though it's still a good rental property for me. But I just want to make sure I don't make that same mistake again. Thanks in advance. So uh, Gray's question is pretty much around how do you estimate uh, property taxes accurately um i can kind of share what i do and then ask if, if you've got something uh different we can we can jump there um i okay. uh, there, there's a few different ways that you can do it or, or at least that i've done it um the the first way is you can go to the county assessor's office um online or not the actual office but you can pull up their website um and you can type in uh, the address the parcel number whatever inf information you have and it'll usually pull up all of the property tax um amounts for that property over you know the last several years and you can use that as a basis um i've also used uh, websites like PropStream. They have uh, pretty accurate property tax information and even like Zillow. Um, I've like compared Zillow to the county assessors and a lot of times those numbers are pretty spot on as well. But, you know, like Gray, I've had a situation where uh, I looked up that data and when I actually purchased the house, it, it ended up going way up. Um, so I usually put a little bit of a buffer on whatever those previous year's taxes are. And the, the last thing that I'll do um, is I'll ask other investors in that market what their property taxes are. Um, because if they've recently purchased, they've got a house that's similar to mine, that at least gives me a ballpark of whether or not what I'm seeing online um, aligns with what's happening in the real world. So that's what I've done, Ash. Or <laughs> that's what I've done in the real world, Ash. What about you? <laughs> um, my first thing would be to look first is what kind of ta taxes do you have? So uh, around me, it's very common to have a school tax, a county tax, so the town and county tax, and then also sometimes there's a village tax, and you'll have three tax payments. Uh, so the village tax is common. If there's village water, there's public utilities there. Uh, and then, you know, like I live out in the country. We have well and septic. We don't have any village tax at all, which is nice, but we're not getting some of the amenities of, <laughs> you know, public <laughs> water and uh, public sewer. 
But so first I would look at that as to what taxes does this property actually have? And then, like Tony said, you go to county websites and you can pull and you can verify. So around me, the different towns, some you can't even find online, which is really, really annoying. But you can go to the school website a lot of times. And sometimes I'll just Google, you know, hey, Springville school property taxes and the website will come up as to where that's linked and sometimes you really got to go through like a school website and click through okay here's this department to go to this department to go to this page and then you find it uh, but google will be your best friend just googling exactly what you're looking for to pull that up um, going to the town or the village website sometimes even you have to go to pay my bill and click on pay my bill and be like, okay, do you want to pay your water bill? Do you want to pay your property tax bill? And you can search the property tax bill from there. Other ones have just the the whole assessment role where it's just, you know, thousands of pages of every property and what the, the tax was for that year. And it's not an actual search where you can put in the address, but all you do for that is go to use your, your, um, uh, web page find key and then type in either you know maybe the owner's last name or the start of the property address and then it will start pulling it up and you can use that find and replace key um, that your computer has also so as tony talked about like having your property reassessed after you know you purchase the property if you think that is going to happen and it is illegal in some areas i don't know about all to have this done after you purchase your property but you can find out how they actually calculate your taxes. So if you the property is assessed at $150,000 right now, how do they calculate what percentage are you being taxed at? So you know what that amount is. Okay, well, if you're purchasing the property for $200,000 and you think that your assessed value is going to go up to one eighty dollars or something like that, calculate it. Use their calculation, their percentage, to see what that tax would actually go up to worst case scenario that you are reassessed. Um, and then also the, the GIS mapping website for your county too is a, a great tool as to where to find uh, property tax information too. You just click right on the parcel and it'll show you owner history and also tax payment for town and county too. Yeah, great advice. I've, I've also heard um, of investors just like calling the county and just like asking like, hey, you know, what do you think this number will be next year? And sometimes they've been able to get a, a decent estimate going that way as well. But I say whatever number you land on, just add some level of buffer um, because it, it is hard to kind of nail that number down um, exactly. And your property taxes usually aren't the same exact amount every single year. They usually do creep up every year. So you are probably going to pay even if it's $100 more or something like that uh, the next year than what they actually were when you purchased it. And, and as we should probably just uh, like define what you meant when you said reassess, right? So like um, if the initial owner owned the property there was some like tax basis that they were using or like a, you know and every county city kind of does it differently but there's some value that the county has assessed that property at um and whenever a property changes hands um, a lot of times they can go back and then reassess that property to see what the new tax assessment is today um, so it's basically the the county just saying hey this property used to be worth a hundred thousand dollars when the old own, owner has it now we assess its value to be two hundred thousand dollars so that means the taxes are going to go up um, based on that new value yeah that's a, a great explanation i'm glad you broke that down it's basically the value they see your home as and it's usually less than what the actual value is and it will if you look at the actual tax bill it will say like you have full market value and then what the assessed value is on your property and sometimes those numbers can be way off um sometimes they can be in your benefit sometimes they cannot be uh one thing that's hard to estimate is a new development when you're doing you know you're buying vacant land um and you're going to build on there what are your taxes going to be uh when we built our personal house we had gone to, uh, you know, the tax assessor and just asked, you know, like these are, you know, kind of this is the floor plan we're kind of looking at the square footage. This is how many acres we're putting on to the property. What do you think it would be and to kind of get an estimate, but also uh, parceling off a property too. if you're buying, you know, around here, it's common for farmers to maybe sell off some of their land and but they want to keep their house. And so they're they're selling 20 acres and they haven't 
hadn't gone through a tax period yet where that's been a separate 20 acres, maybe off their 100 acres. And that's where you have to you kind of figure out, too, what will your taxes be? Because there is no history of taxes yet for that property as its, its separate parcel. Awesome. Well, I think we hit pretty much everything there is <laughs> when it comes to estimating taxes. <laughs> I don't know. You, you got anything else on your side? I don't know. I feel like there was one more thing I was going to say about it, but yeah, it's long gone now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, anytime that you're analyzing a property, these are all estimates, you know, and if and if you being off by $50 or $25 on your property taxes breaks the deal, then maybe reconsider whether or not it's a deal that you want to go after anyways. Yeah, I think at least verify what they are now. Know exactly what they are. So don't just take, um, you know, what the realtor is telling you they are or what the homeowner is telling you they are. Look look it up, ask for the tax bills, um, use some of these websites we mentioned to verify that data and then go and estimate what the future may hold. And another thing too is that if you are reassessed, um, so whether it's because you purchased the property, the, the tax assessor is coming and reassessing that property and seeing what the new value is, or the whole town as a whole is the whole town is reassessing every single property. This recently happened in the city of Buffalo where everyone's property was reassessed. You can actually go and you can fight that. They have a date set where you can come and you can say why you don't think this is fair and why this is the actual value. Uh, so if you are you know have that happen that's definitely an option for you and reach out to the assessor's office to to see when that date is that there's a word for it i can't think of what it's called but they call that date something where you can actually go and kind of protest what your property was reassessed for there's also companies out there that will actually do that for you, that whole process for you of disputing your property taxes and the new assessed value and they just take a a percentage um, of what you would have paid or something like that, the percentage of the money they're saving you. So that's always an option for you too. Hmm, I didn't know that about the company. The, the companies exist that, that do that. That's that's super interesting. Yeah, I can't give you any examples, but I know they're out <laughs> they're there. Out there somewhere. <laughs> I know people that have used them and you know use them anytime they're reassessed, even if they you know save a hundred bucks a year, they pay the person you know maybe twenty bucks or whatever mm. to to save, but. Awesome. Hey, well, I think that's it for our <laughs> yeah. property tax episode. <laughs> but also something really interesting, if you guys are market doing market research and looking for maybe an out-of-state market, um, is look at the property taxes too when you're analyzing a market because they vary widely. And you can go online and you can just Google, you know, what are the more states for the highest property tax or anything like that. And maybe that can help you narrow down where you actually want to invest. I right now, property taxes are really high in New York and a motivation for me to invest out of state would be because they are so high here. And I look at it, okay, I can get houses pretty cheap right now in my area, but I'm paying, you know, maybe twenty, thirty thousand dollars now, but I'm paying five thousand dollars every single year going forward in property taxes. Maybe I would rather go out of state and buy a property for one hundred and fifty thousand and only pay three thousand in taxes every single year because once I have that one fifty paid off, I'm paying a lot less in property taxes every year. Yeah. And you know, instead of you know paying, I'd rather pay more money now than continuously pay money every single every year. Every year, forever. Yeah, that's a really good point yeah. because we, you know, we have cabins in Tennessee that are almost 3,000 square feet and we're paying like 130, 140 bucks a month in property taxes. And I have a 900. Why are you going to make me cry right now? <laughs> we, we have a 900 square foot uh, house in, in yeah. Joshua Tree and we're paying like 317 a month in property taxes. We've got a three, you know, our 391 square foot studios. I think we're paying like 290 or 280, something like that a month in property taxes. So you know, it's a really good point that property taxes should be included when you're comparing markets as well. Hey, well, you guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, these episodes, if you haven't heard already, are going to be released on the very new Real Estate Rookie YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So make sure you guys subscribe to that. <laughs> yeah. Every week um, you'll see the podcast episodes on there, but you'll also uh, there will be another video released every single week with a different uh, tips, advice, tricks uh, to real estate investors specific to rookies. Uh, some will be by me, some by Tony and 
some from our awesome contributors, Kyle and Lauren, who are on episode one of the Real Estate Rookie podcast. Thank you guys for listening. I'm Ashley at Wealth From Rentals, and he's Tony at Tony J. Robinson on Instagram. We'll see you guys back on next Wednesday with a new guest, and make sure you guys join our Facebook group, Real Estate Rookie. We'll see you guys again. Thank you.